Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice he has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. 
the great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there that a day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a full, a terrible end. He will make all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is seventy years, perhaps in strength even eighty. Yet the sum of them is but labored and sorrow, for they pass away quickly, and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you beloved are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep at night and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love 
and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing hymn number 53 on page four of the service leaflet. Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. 
I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents for to all those who have more will be given and they will, but from those, excuse me. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents for to all those who have more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So, Allison, um, thank you for talking to me today. And can you um, describe briefly the music ministry at All Saints before COVID? Uh, before COVID, our two choirs met every Thursday evening for rehearsal during the program year. The adult choir sang in church every Sunday with a few exceptions. And our junior choir sang once or twice a month. How did the music ministry at All Saints change in response to all of the restrictions that are now placed on in-person worship, um, you know, at the start of the pandemic? And then how has the ministry evolved over these past months? Yeah, well, the biggest challenge that we've faced is the restriction on singing. Um, since we don't know very much about the virus yet, um, the one thing that we do know is that singing together indoors for a long period of time is just not safe. Um, so. At the beginning, I was nervous to try any sort of recorded music because I didn't know how to do it. And I'd heard that it was very time consuming and it is time consuming, um, but I've, I've learned how to do it and I've actually enjoyed it. Um, the more that I learn, the more possibilities I discover. So that's really fun. And the choir is getting used to recording themselves and, and sending me their recordings too. Um, it's definitely not the same as when we were able to sing together, but it is really amazing how much um, the recording sounds like our choir and our congregation when it's all put together. And I know that that means a lot to me and to the singers and to the congregation. And um, with all of these changes, how have you seen um, Jesus in unexpected or surprising ways through all of this? One of the most wonderful ways that I've seen Christ during this year is in the many ways that our musicians are staying connected with one another. When we gather together online, we always share how things are going, how we're feeling, what's new with our families, and there's always a lot of laughter. And I've also loved being a part of the community that has formed around our nightly Compline services on Facebook. At the start of each day's live stream, the Compline leader often shares a te the text of a hymn that speaks to them. And it's been fun exploring the hymnal text separate from the music. Um, there's such a wealth of beautiful language and it shows God in so many different ways. And hearing those words each night 
has been a surprising and beautiful place to find Jesus. Cool. And thank you so much for um, talking with me. And it was great to hear some of your insights and experiences. So I appreciate that. And thank you for your ministry. And um, as a member of the choir, I am looking forward to more musical adventures in the coming months. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> thank you. Come Holy Spirit and fill the hearts of your faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. Jesus said, it is as, as if a man has slaves and entrusted his property to them. To the one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. This is the Sunday that we begin our approach to Advent, that time when the old church year and the new one overlap with the themes of justice, hope, judgment, peace, and the longing for Christ's coming at the end of this age and at Christmas and in our hearts each day. It is in many ways a time outside of time, an opportunity to reflect on time itself and especially on God's purposes for us and for the world. The gospel passage before us this morning is one that is often read and understood to be about judgment. God is the master who goes away on a long journey, having left vast and abundant resources with his servants. Because we need to remember that a talent in Jesus' day was not an ability that a person had, but was a measure of money equal to about 15 years wages for an ordinary laborer. The amount entrusted to each of these three servants in the parable was almost incomprehensible, but that's often the way that Jesus' parables go. So when the master finally returns, without having given any instructions about what is to be done with this money, he criticizes and penalizes the servant who was given the smallest amount, who just buried the money. To be clear, we must not take away from this the idea that Jesus is urging his hearers to look for a good rate of return in the stock market and then punishes those who don't or can't do that. In fact, Jesus and the prophets before him actually did have a great deal to say about money and material goods and how they are to be used. But the vast and abundant resources in this parable are actually the resources of faith and history and purposes of God for Israel to be a blessing to the world that were squandered in their complicity with Rome and the Roman claim to be the final arbiters and controllers of, of the meaning and value of life. So much of Jesus' sharp rebuke to the leaders of his time came to fruition in 70 AD when the Roman Empire finally destroyed Jerusalem and raised the temple. The third servant in this parable acted from fear and distrust of a master he clearly did not know or understand. And the consequences of his behavior are a result of his false reading and misunderstanding of his master's intentions. In some ways, we could say that he brought upon himself the very behavior that he expected and feared. So what were the master's intentions and what are God's intentions and purposes for us and for the world? In the parable, the master's intention was that the servants would be good stewards of the resources with which he had entrusted them. They had been given a treasure and they should have let it continue to blossom and grow, not just molder in the ground. And going all the way back to Genesis, to the beginning, God created the world for the sheer joy and creativity and goodness of it. And God created humankind 
to tend and care for and be wise and grateful stewards of this good creation. And a little bit further along in the covenant with Abraham and Sarah, God stated it even more plainly. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God's purposes for his people, for those whom he had called, are to be a blessing to others. And the Catechism in our prayer book puts it in a different way by asking, what is the mission of the church? What is its purpose? And the answer that is given is this, the mission of the church is to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. The mission of the church is to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. This deepens and sharpens God's intent. Not only are we to be agents of God's blessing to others, but we are actively to work for the unity of all people with one another and with God. That unity is spiritual and personal and societal, not just religious. In other words, as much as we personally and as a church are called to do the work of evangelism, which will help people to be consciously connected to God in Christ, we are also called to work for reconciliation and unity between and among all people. Now, it's important to remember that reconciliation and unity do not mean uniformity or a facile glossing over of differences. Instead, reconciliation means seeing the other as someone of value, worthy of love and respect, seeing the other as being made in God's image, someone whom we can learn from as much as we can give to. And none of this is easy. The work of reconciliation is hard, but it is necessary as we know in our current political and social climate post-election. And yet, reconciliation is fundamental to God's purpose. It is part of the Advent hope. A very striking and poignant example of the ministry of reconciliation is found in the life and history of Coventry Cathedral in England. 80 years ago, on November, no, November 14th and 15th overnight in 1940, the city of Coventry was bombed, part of the Nazi Blitzkrieg. Nearly all of the city center was destroyed and almost 600 people were killed in that particular bombing raid. St. Michael's Cathedral, a 14th century building was demolished. But the story has a very different end than the despair and destruction that the bombs intended. The very next morning, Father Richard Howard, the cathedral provost, put forth a vision to rebuild, not as a sign of defiance, but as a sign of faith, trust, and hope in God's future, not just for the church, but for the city itself. This vision gave the people who had been bombed an alternative to their feelings of bitterness and hatred. And eventually the cathedral developed a ministry of peace and reconciliation, which works in areas of conflict in the world with both prayer and practical support. And that ministry continues even today. The outward sign of this hope is described in a brief text on the cathedral's website. It says, shortly after the destruction, the cathedral stonemason, Jock Forbes, noticed that two of the charred medieval roof timbers had fallen in the shape of a cross. He set them up in the ruins where they were later placed on an altar of rubble, 
with the moving words, Father, forgive, inscribed on the sanctuary wall. Another cross was fashioned from three medieval nails by local priest Arthur Wales. The cross of nails has become the symbol of Coventry's ministry of reconciliation. And even today, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, wears a cross of nails often to symbolize that ministry of reconciliation. The ruins of the former building form a forecourt to the modern building, which was completed in 1962. And together, the two structures create one living cathedral. Reconciliation between God and humanity, person to person, in all ways and at all levels of society, is part of God's purpose for the world. And those of us who follow Jesus are called to participate in that work in whatever way we can, small or great. It is part of the Advent hope, part of what we long for and pray for in this season. Reconciliation requires honesty about wrongs done and harm inflicted. It requires confession and a willingness to examine our own attitudes and actions. Reconciliation needs peace and humility and a willingness to be about forgiveness and peacemaking. Reconciliation depends on us knowing we are all one human family held in God's just and loving embrace. May Christ's ministry of reconciliation be part of our prayer, our work, our longing, and our hope in this Advent tide. And let us pray in the words of Coventry's Litany of Reconciliation. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The hatred which divides nation from nation, race from late race, class from class, Father, forgive. The covetous desires of people and nations to possess what is not their own, Father, forgive. The greed which exploits the work of human hands and lays waste the earth, Father, forgive. Our envy of the welfare and happiness of others, Father, forgive. Our indifference to the plight of the imprisoned, the homeless, the refugee, Father, forgive. The lust which dishonors the bodies of men, women, and children, Father, forgive. The pride which leads us to trust in ourselves and not in God, Father, forgive. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Amen. And now let us give our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great, shall be great among, among the Gentiles. we prepare to say the prayers of the people, I would invite you to put uh, any names that you would like to pray for in the chat or unmute yourself at the time indicated and say those names aloud. The prayers of the people from the Church of England. In joyful expectation of his coming to, a to our aid, we pray to Jesus. Come to your church as Lord and judge. We pray for these members of our parish, Linda, Stewart, Carrie, and Corey Cunningham, Julie Salthouse and Matt Dalmedo and Timothy, Charlotte Davis, Sister Deborah Francis, Barbara and Tim Day, and Molly Ferber. And for the faithfulness and renewal of All Saints Church in our diocese, help us to live in the light of your coming and give us a longing for your kingdom. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to your world as King of the Nations. We pray for our country and our leaders in this time of transition. Before you rulers will stand in silence. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to the suffering as Savior and Comforter. We pray for all on our parish prayer list, especially Phyllis Demansky, Natalie Grossman, Pat Howard, Steve Kowalik, Prue Peterson, Bonnie Stocker, Michelle, Daniel, and Richie, Nancy Mink and her family, Suzanne Traub, Vincent and his family, all those suffering with COVID-19 and those caring for them. Are there others? Michelle and her brothers. Break into our lives where we struggle with sickness and distress and set us free to serve you forever. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come to us as shepherd and guardian of our souls. We remember all who have died, including those we name. Andy Moody, Jonathan Sachs, Andy Braunschweiger. Doris Herman. Give us with all the faithful departed a share in your victory over evil and death. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. 
Come from heaven, Lord Jesus, with power and great glory. Lift us up to meet you, that with all your saints and angels we may live and reign with you in your new creation. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, do not delay. Give new courage to your people who trust in your love. By your coming, raise to share in the joy of your kingdom on earth as in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I would invite you to unmute yourself for the exchange of the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. With you. And now may Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with his light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing hymn number 632 on page nine of your service leaflet. And keep yourselves on mute, but sing as loudly as you can. Yeah. 
mists and rocks and quicksands still guides O Christ to Thee. Oh, make my church dear.